And welcome to Gross Point North High School, where today we've got a couple of crosstown rivals going at it. It's Liggett, who makes the crosstown trip to North, the state finalist from a year ago against the six-time state champion, Gross Point University Liggett. Hello again, everybody. My name is Chad Bush alongside Sam Stick Day. Beautiful day for baseball here this morning in Gross Point. Glad you're with us on Long Ball Live. Uh, these are two teams, Stick, that, look, have pedigree behind them. They're rivals. Uh, this is the matchup that everybody's been waiting for. It's Liggett. It's North. A lot of talent, a lot of excitement around this game. Yeah, not only are they rivals, they're in close proximity to each other. We've covered those types of games, right? We've done those crosstown, Wald Lake Western, Wald Lake Northern, Wald Lake Central type games. This is completely different because these guys all played together when they were 12 years old on that Little League World Series team that went to Williamsport, Pennsylvania. I mean, six players on North from there, ten players on Liggett from that team. So not only do they know each other, they are friends. They grew up together. This is a little bit more than just a crosstown rivalry. It is uh, two and two for Liggett to start the year. Two and two for Gross Point North to start the year. Pretty uh, even records. Uh, St. Mary's, though, the opponent for Liggett, uh, who now is on a 75-game win streak. Uh, so no shame in that loss. In fact, Liggett led in that ball game uh, to start three to nothing. So. No shame in uh, either team. And North, we don't know a whole lot about either, but two and two, their start. We're going to have the uh, pregame interview with head coach Dan Samini coming up right after this. Thanks for watching. This is Long Ball Live, live from Gross Point North High School, home of the Norsemen. Welcome to Gross Point North High School as we get set for Gross Point Liggett against Gross Point North. And we're joined by head coach of Liggett, Dan Samini a five-time state champion for himself. His school has six of them. And today they go against a crosstown rival, always a rival when you play north, south. Uh, and you get north today, you'll get south later. But this is a fun rivalry. Uh, how did this thing all come together? Well, it's a lot of fun. Um, you know, we had Little League kids that played at uh, Williamsport. Uh, we have ten players on our team that played in Williamsport yeah. through Gross Point Woods Little League, and they have six players. So these guys are really close, good, tight brother hood and now uh we're playing against them it's really really fun neat opportunity today for liggett a uh, team that moves up to division two this year number one ranked in the preseason high expectations you did lose a lot of talent from a year ago mm -hmm. but you got a bunch coming back uh tell us about your club this year two and two right now you've played tough competition yes uh you're coming off a doubleheader sweep on thursday you know, uh, you know, we're just getting our, you know, like everybody else in the state, we're getting our stride going. We're trying to work some kinks out. Um, but we had a really good game on Thursday. The bats were alive. I thought we played really well against St. Mary's in the first game. Uh, really showed some stuff. So, um, you know, it's a process. It's a process for all these teams, and we want to be playing our best baseball in the middle and the end of the season. And uh, I think we're headed that way. And stay healthy. You start with Liggett, you start with Jaron Purify. Uh, this is a guy that, that is a Major League Baseball prospect. Yes, sir. Uh, and some have him the top-rated player in the state. Some have him the top-rated player in the Midwest. Uh, this is a, a big-time player and a big-time individual. You, I know you like yeah. him as a human being as well. Tell I, us about Purify. Well, he's just a great kid. Um, he does everything the right way. You know, our motto here is everything counts, and he exemplifies as that. He goes in the classroom, does what he has to do. Yes, sir, no, sir. Treats everyone with great respect. Uh, treats his game with respect on and off the field. And he's a great leader for his teammates. And not to say he's one of the best players in the state. Um, five to a player. Great shortstop. You'll see it today. Great speed. Great power. Um, he does it all. He's our Mike Trout on our, on our baseball program. And uh, I can't be more proud of him. And he's heading to Clemson and maybe even getting drafted. And, and who knows? What a great story and, yeah. and, and team. Uh, up the middle defensively, everybody wants to have a strong core and, and center unit. You have especially a good one defensively. Yes. Tell us about your uh, middle of the defense that you love and that has played so well this year. Our catcher, uh, Oliver Service, is going to University of Texas. Um, another five-tool guy. Great arm. You'll see him behind the plate. Uh, great power. Can run. Uh, great leader. Um, up the middle, we have Purify at short going to Clemson. We have uh, Reggie Sharp at second base. He's going to Michigan. Switch hitter, very, very, very talented player. I have a sophomore in center field that can fly, um, Gary Stacy. So he's going to really help us and solidify that up the middle. Uh, Preston Barr at third base could play any of those positions. He's starting today on the mound, but uh, he's as good a third baseman as they're in the state. And he's going to Michigan also. So we are strong, strong, strong in the infield and very strong up the middle. 
offensively, we've seen a little bit of pop from service. Mm-hmm. We know Purify can can do it, and, and, and Reggie, of course, can too. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you guys can run, and, and I know that's a big run. part of your offense. Tell us what the game plan offensively is this year in 2023 for the Knights. You know, our, our, our plan is to put the ball in play, and uh, when we get on, we, we're going we're gonna to be a tear on the base pass. We're going to run, we're going to hit, we're going to hit and run, we're going to bunt and run, we're going to suicide squeeze, we're going to do everything possible to upset the defense and, and get our guys running in space, so um, I'm excited about it. The, the, if In order to do that, you got to get guys on base, so Number one thing, get on base and make stuff happen. The opponent today uh, won't be easy. This is the uh, runner-up in Division One from a year ago, uh, maybe a pitch or two away from beating Orchard Lake St. Mary's mm-hmm. and ruining their streak. Absolutely. Uh, this is a very good club and, and a coach that took them there after he got hired in February. Yeah. Uh, this is an intriguing imp- opponent despite you know the rivalry. Mm-hmm. This is a very good baseball very team. Very good baseball team. Very, very. I'll tell you right now, Coach Chubnell has done an amazing job of building a culture here. There wasn't a real good culture. They He built a culture here, did a really good job gelling these kids together. And, uh, you know, these are talented young men, uh, very, very good baseball kids, uh, good kids on the mound. So uh, they can make another long run, and uh, and the coach, they picked the right guy. So I'm excited that he's here. He brings great baseball to Gross Point, uh, great coaching to Gross Point. So I'm, I'm, I'm excited for them, and I'm excited for him, and I'm uh, very proud of him. Those uh, words carry a lot for a guy that graduated from Gross Point South. That's right. Gross Point <laughs> South, 87, baby. Uh, Grease Bomb's a great uh, great mentor of mine and great, great friend. I talk to him once a week. So uh, we keep it in the points here. We all, we're all tight-knit. Uh, us coaches cheer for each other when we're not playing each other. So Big-time baseball community. They come together today with a collection of talent, 13 individuals, 16 individuals 16. that played in the Little League World Series. Mm-hmm. Together, they'll come today, North and Liggett. And we'll have it for you next. Uh, Dan Samini, thanks so much for doing this. Thank you. Appreciate it. We'll talk to you several more times uh, this year. Absolutely. And all the best to you. Yeah, thanks for having us. All right, thank you. That's Dan Samini. We're back with more on the prep right after this. And welcome. We're ready for first pitch from Gross Point North. Liggett up to bat. And uh, a little early start here. Chad Bush and Sam Stick Day. And on the mound is Rocco Cardinelli, the right-handed pitcher and the junior. And he will face Jaron Purify, one of the top players in the country. A guy that's really a spark plug at the top of the lineup. And uh, there are not many better players around than this guy. This is a big time talent from the leadoff spot for Dan Samini. And as you heard the coach talking from Liggett, uh, they like to get on base early and he's the exact guy to get this offense rolling. Evens the count at one one So Rocco Cardinelli. This is a guy that uh, as a catcher as well, and, and they like the way he was able to throw the baseball last year. It's a low 80s fastball, got a slide piece. It's his second best pitch. That one's up and in. Guy that won innings last year, pitched well in relief against St. Clair, and uh, pitched quite well uh, at times this year but as every pitcher stick you're trying to find your groove early especially with the weather yeah and uh, by nature he's kind of a reliever right they got him as the third starter yep. on this team so he's coming in today starting it it's a lot of pressure against a team like Liggett purify ahead of the count three and one leadoff man no score and that one is lifted foul away and that'll make it a full count Dan Samini saying look purify is our Mike Trout he does everything hits for power Hits for average, he runs well, and he never complains. He says he's just a great kid. He doesn't complain, doesn't expect anything, and uh, a pleasant treat to have on this team. Cardinelli has to step off too much time. Your home plate umpire is Scott Wellandowski. Your field umpire is Ron Churchill. 73 degrees. Glad you're with us on this Saturday morning. And Purify is doing what a leadoff hitter is supposed to do. Give his guys a chance to see what this pitcher Cardinelli has. Yeah, and he's already seen, what, six pitches in this at-bat. He's he's doing exactly what he's supposed to do, and hopefully he can get on base. He's been under a couple when he's been swinging, though. Inside, he walked him. So a six-pitch at-bat, Purify gets on base, and this is a guy that can really run. So, already a fast start for Liggett, who swept Plymouth Christian 
a ranked team in Division Four. As we get, look at the lineup, Jaron Purify, the leadoff man, Oliver Service, Reggie Sharp, Preston Barr, the cleanup man, Ryan Jones at first base, Jake Martin will DH, Nick Green in left field. Andrew Johnson at first base, and Gary Stacy, the center fielder. This is Oliver Service, who leads this team with seven RBIs, a couple of home runs. This is a commit to Texas, and a big-time prospect who's really improved defensively in the offseason. Big-time pop from Service, who hit a home run against Orchard Lake St. Mary's, the national champion, last week. Yeah, service with seven RBIs already on the season. And like you said, he's already improving, and that's what you want to see. When a guy's good, you just don't want to see him reach a ceiling. Every offseason, he's getting better. The catcher, Rocco, gives the sign. Throwback to first. And uh, Bobby Rhodes slapped that tag just a little bit tardy. Oh, and they almost got purified leaning. Big Bobby Rhodes over there holding on. Purify with a good size lead. He is running and it's fouled away. Service will force Purify back. There's a track meet going on and watch out. That's right. Our PA announcer says watch out on the track. We got a track meet going on back here. Yeah, Gross Point North holding a lot of athletics today. A beautiful facility with this new turf. We might be able to get some footage of the field events if Schwartz is uh, savvy enough up there. <laughs> Here's Oliver Service. It was even with a count, 101. Purify was running the last time up. Reggie Sharp in the on-deck circle. He is running. That's a line shot to right field. That's going to get down. That's a base hit. Purify will round third and hold. And it's runners at the corners for Liggett here in the top of the first. What an excellent piece of hitting, too, driving that into the uh, center field, right center gap, able to move the runner from first to third. So a great piece of hitting by service. You see the ability to go gap to gap. A lot of extra base pop. And here comes Reggie Sharp, the switch hitter. He'll bat left against the right-handed pitching Rocco Cardinelli, the junior. Six foot three. Got that long arm. Got a lot of whippy movement. Got a lot of movement on that fastball. Tough to square up. And that one hits Sharp on the calf. So the bases are now loaded, and that'll bring up the cleanup hitter, Preston Barr, the pitcher. And now the catcher, Charlie Rocco, out to have a word stick. And, and this is not the start that uh, second-year head coach Kevin Shubnell envisioned. No, especially against a team like Liggett, who just loves this. That's what they want. They want chaos on the base paths at all times. And this puts them in a great position. Zero outs, bases loaded with your cleanup hitter. So it's Purify at third, Service at second, Sharp at first, nobody out. This is the cleanup man and the Michigan commit. Yeah. Preston Barr, pitch gets away, nowhere to go. It looked like it hit his bat. It looked like it hit the bottom of the barrel of the bat. We'll try to get another look at it. Scott Wallandowski has called it a ball for the moment. Ryan Jones in the on-deck circle, nobody out, bases loaded. Top of the first for Liggett against the state finalist in Division One from a year ago. And that one's upstairs. Cardinelli has had some control issues this year. Yeah, he had a rough outing last start as well. But that's what happens, you know, when, like we said, he's the majority of a closer. So coming in in a starter position, it's a completely different mindset. Indeed it is. Inside corner, strike called. Well-placed fastball firm on the inside black. And that'll move the count to two and one. So Preston Barr, it's pitcher on pitcher. And both pitchers will hit today. That one is lined to right. That's a base hit. Purify into score. Oliver Service right behind, the throw not in time, and it's a two-run single off the bat of Preston Barr, 2-0 Liggett. 
Yeah, way to cash in right there by the big four-spot hitter. Just a little bit of a single. Once again, opposite field. Lickett's done a good job staying back on the ball. And Barr gets himself a couple RBIs and good base running, too. Lickett now has him at first and third, getting that extra base round in second. Sharp, smart base running. The kind of start you dream of if you're Dan Semini. Nobody out yet. That'll bring up the number five hitter, Ryan Jones, team captain. And uh, Kevin Shubnell out to have a word. Kevin Shubnell, what a story. He took over the team last year at Gross Point North in February. He's the dean of students at Gross Point North and took that team to get going. But when they did, watch out, they went on some kind of run stick all the way to the finals, unranked and uh, nearly knocked off St. Mary's. St. Mary's won that game one nothing. Swing and a miss, Tardy with that Cardinelli fastball. Looked like he picked it up a notch there. Yeah, he does have some good pop on his fastball. I know he said he clocks in about low 80s, but it, it's a heavy fastball that he throws. Still nobody out. Bar on at first, Sharp on at third. It's a bunt and it's a foul back and now it's a, a strike. I love that call, though, by the coach, Samanelli, right there. I mean, if you're about moving the ball, moving the base runners, creating havoc, bunting when you got no outs and a runner on first and third is almost an impossible play to defend. Dan Samini with some soft hands. He played uh, his ball, we heard in the pregame show, at Gross Point South. Class of 87, he said. Class of 87 reminds me of the Breakfast Club. Isn't that an 87 <laughs> release? See him out there with the jukebox? Sure. He wouldn't, he wouldn't be Bender, would he? <laughs> Fouled back. Uh, ahead of the count, though, is Cardinelli, and that's kind of the key to his success. Cardinelli, a guy that has a lot of movement. Throws the four seam and the two seam. I want his chop foul again. So the pitch count starting to mount up in this inning. Already 21 pitches thrown by the junior right hander. So sharp on at third. Bar on at first. Great stop by the backstop Rocco. Got the Rocco to Rocco battery going on. That's right. Hey, good catch. Just a sophomore is Charlie, the catcher, working on his blocking, his framing, and, and that, stopping the ball. Swing and a miss. The first out of the inning is recorded. Down on strikes. It looks like you may have chased that one a little bit outside the zone, but when you got two strikes on you, you got to protect. Kind of a half swing, but yeah, that was a little bit outside. So Jones is out, and that'll bring up Jake Martin, the designated hitter. Still first and third, one out. North and double play depth up the middle with the second baseman, Shanley. And the shortstop, Schaefer. Beautiful day for baseball. A little bit of wind. 73 degrees here in beautiful Gross Point. Nick Green in the on-deck circle. Pitch on the outside corner. Not going to get it. There goes the runner. And Barr is stolen second. So now two runners in scoring position. Two runs in. Top of the first. Martin is known to be a good bunter, so we'll see if he displays it here. Dan Samini loves his bunting ability. That one is fisted foul. Bobby Rhodes giving chase. David Fantau running for his life. And all is well in prep land. Thanks to Pat the Stat for his last minute uh, realignment of Fantau. Yeah, that was right where he was standing about 10 minutes ago. The 1-2. Two. 
That'll even the count. Two and two. Two men on. Two runs in. Just one out. This is Jake Martin. He plays football and also plays hockey. Ooh, got him. Second hit by pitch in the inning. That'll load the bases again. You know, we saw that on Thursday, too. West Bloomfield and Rochester Adams. First inning, couple hit batsmen. Easy run scored, and it's tough to recover from that. Really is. That'll bring up Nick Green, the left fielder, as you get a look at the Norseman defensively. Arm Brewster, Schaefer, Shanley, Rhodes. Rocco behind home plate. Prade in left field. Brennan Hill in center and Arsenault in right. Those are their two loaded arms. They're number one and two starters. Of course, Hill was the one that took St. Mary's to the wire a year ago. Bases loaded, one out. Nick Green, his brother Matthew, played last year on this team. He's at U of M now in the business school, doing great things. Probably could have played some college baseball, but he said, I'm good. I'll just go to business school at Michigan. Nothing wrong with that. Must be nice to be talented on multiple levels. No doubt. Gap to gap hitter, a guy that can do some damage from that number eight spot. Gary Stacy, excuse me, Andrew Johnson will bat next. Followed by Gary Stacy. Two and one the count, bases loaded, one out. Fouled away, and that'll even the count. Good patient hitting by Liggett in this first inning. You know, everything that they've been driving has been to the opposite field. 32 pitches already for Cardinelli. It's a high pitch count. And there's only one out. Kevin Chubnell, Warren De La Salle graduate, head coach in his second year. Strike three call. Scott Wolandowski said so, and Green is punched out on a 50-50 call. Here comes Johnson with two outs and a base is loaded, and the biggest strikeout of the game for Mr. Cardinelli. And yeah, we heard Green coming back to the dugout saying it was up. Well, it may have been a little high, but when you got two strikes on you, you got to protect. Tell him, Stick. I will. I'm sure his coach will, too. <laughs> Andrew Johnson, the hitter. The stocky left-handed stick. Johnson, uh, a tireless worker. Old-school type player. Samini really credits his work habits. Likes to wear the pants high and calls him uh, shoeless. Tribute to Shoeless Joe. He's got those griffies on. Yeah, those are tight. If you're going to wear shoes, might as well wear those ones. Bases loaded, two outs. And that's upstairs. Nowhere to put them. Two runs in thanks to the pitcher Preston Barr who helped his cause with a two-run single. Lick it off to a fast start. They've loaded the bases twice. But North could get out of it here, Stick. They think pretty highly of the situation considering. Well, they got some work to do down 3-0 and in the count. You got to come at the batter right now. And we're going to see how much trust they have the big number 22 if he's swinging away on 3-0. and Nowhere to put him. 3-0 pitch. Strike call to get me over fastball right down Mack Avenue. Bases loaded. Sharp at third. Bar at second. Martin at first. 3-1 count with two outs. Andrew Johnson, the batter. Strike called. Run it full. Way to battle back by Cardinelli. Two straight strikes down the pipe. Tough to sit on those. No doubt. Now runners will be in motion. Sharp edges off a third. Cardinelli to the set. Swing and a miss. And North gets out of it, giving up just two runs. Liggett gets two. And they draw first blood and gross point. We're back to meet the Norsemen right after this.
love running and working out, but my heel pain was devastating. So I go to fix my feet today, and in about 30 minutes, I walked out pain-free and could not believe it. Even if you think you tried everything and nothing has worked for you, call or visit Fix My Feet today. Fix My Feet is now open in Rochester Hills, located on Rochester Road in the Target Center. Come in for a free consultation. All right, this is Adam, take two. Mark? I guess. <laughs> I go like this. <laughs> The best part about playing football in Texas has to be the reaction from the community. I want to encourage others to play volleyball or choir because you get to experience new things and do stuff that you've never done before. My reason why is passion. My reason why is pride. Oh, they made days like this in April selectively. And today is one of them. It's a beautiful mid-April day in Gross Point. Here's the lineup for the Gross Point Norsemen. State runners up from a year ago under second-year head coach Kevin Shubnell. So, Cam Schaefer will lead things off, the senior at shortstop. Rocco Cardinelli will bat second. He's the pitcher. You saw him in the first. Brennan Hill, the center fielder. Right fielder Jordan Arsenault, that's their number one and number two arms. They won't see them today. Bobby Rhodes is the first baseman. He'll bat fifth. The designated hitter is Ryan Henderson. Shane Arbrewster is at third base. He'll bat seventh. Ben Prate in left field. And Luke Staley at second base. He'll bat ninth. Luke Shanley. All right, here we go. Lead off man Cam Schaefer, the captain. Had a big hit against Ford in the 1-0 win. Ground ball to second, sharp, that's automatic, and that's out number one as he flips it over to the first baseman. Johnson, one pitch, one out. Yeah, how do you feel about first pitch swinging, first pitch of the game? You know, we talked about it with the last leadoff batter for Liggett, just working the count, being able to see six, seven pitches, and then here you get the exact opposite of the coin, one pitch, one out. I think it's circumstantial, but I think your leadoff guy should give a look. And, uh, you know, sometimes you want to ambush. I don't know if that was the time. Your guy just threw 35, 36 pitches in the first. I think you want to let him get a breather. He might get an elbow to the ribs from uh, the guy on the on-deck circle, Rocco Cardinelli. He'll take a couple pitches for himself. And... Uh, it was a wise choice. Yeah, I've seen different schools of thought on it because you know the pitcher's no, going right. to try to get you're ahead right. on the first pitch, so you yep. want you want to swing at that pitch, but also, you know, like you said, you want, you want to be able to see what he's got. Yep. And give this guy a, a rest. Chopper to short, purify, gloves, throws, money. Two up, two down for North in the bottom half of the first. That's about as smooth as a play if you can get out of your shortstop, Purify. He read that bounce perfectly off this new turf, and it's got a little bit of bounce to it, too. We saw when they were taking some warm-ups, some of the high choppers yeah. get a little extra height on this new turf. But look how smooth that is. Throw across the body, beautiful baseball. It's a next-level talent committed to Clemson, and uh, it may not get there. He may not get there. This is Brennan Hill, one of the state's finest players, center fielder and pitcher. This guy is uh, committed to the University of Michigan. They have signed him up, Tracy Smith has, to be a Wolverine next year. He's got a big bat, a pole hitter. A couple years, he's a junior. My bad. He does like to pull it. The dimensions here, they don't say. I don't know. Inside corner, this is Barr, by the way, Preston Barr. 88 to 92 with that fastball. Got a fine curve. We'll see a slide piece and a change, too. Not only the RBI leader or tied for the RBI leads. Well, now he took the RBI lead, but this guy can sling it. And right now... He's behind in the count, 3-1 and one to Brennan Hill. A quick 1-2 out on Cardinelli and Schaefer, and Hill battling here. A 
comes right at Hill. He's got a lot of faith in his fastball. 8 pitches for Barr. About 30 less than his counterpart, Cardinelli. Ground ball right side, Sharp has it on the turf, throws to Johnson, inning over. A nine pitch inning for the future Wolverine, Preston Barr. Two nothing Liggett, let's go to the second. Begin with your dream, your drive, your grit, the heart and vision of every member of your team. We take it all. And from those threads of greatness, we weave a uniform of a champion. In many ways, our sport is just like yours. We've brought together a team of elite designers. We've put in the time and the sweat, perfecting our craft over 14 years. We've outfitted thousands of teams for thousands of victories, approaching each new project, each new game, like it's the only one we'll ever play. And let's be honest. We've done it all with a quality so unmatched that some can't help but call it perfection. You know, it's more than just a shirt. Look like a champion, play like a champion. A champion powered by the G. Hashtag G Brand USA. G Brand USA. Elite design, unmatched quality, American pride. We're proudly made in the USA. Chad and Stick back with you from Gross Point North. Glad to be here. Thanks for having us. No, you're fine, Jaren. You, it's your world. We're just living in it. Number nine batter is Gary Stacy. This is a speedy center fielder and uh, solid defensively and an athletic guy. Just a sophomore. A lot of mix of youth and experience. Got some wheels on him, so if he gets on base, expect for him to make some noise, too. I feel like we've said that about everybody for Liggett who's come up to bat. Yeah, they, they've got an athletic team, and they can do some things. Speed and power is a beautiful thing in baseball, and they've got that in the recipe. This is Gary Stacy, and he fists one out of play. Back amongst the... Watch out! Oh, right in the long jump pit. <laughs> Was that the long jump pit? Yeah, long jump pit. All right. Guy jumped 23 inches still. Ground ball, third base. Tough play. Armbruster handles it, throws up the line, not in time. Stacy beat it out. Tough play for Armbruster. No chance against this guy who runs well, Stick, like you said. Yeah, he runs well, and you make a good defensive play like that, you just got to be able to turn those hips and snap that ball across the field. A little bit offline, able to beat the throw and the tag. Great angle there on that replay. So here's Jaron Purify, who led things off of the walk. And there goes Stacy as it gets by the catcher. Charlie Rocco. We mentioned the pitch count. It's now 44 pitches for the talented junior right-hander Rocco Cardinelli. As we learned, Purify likes to see a lot of pitches too. And they'll spoil some. Yep. Runner in scoring position. Oliver Service in the on-deck circle. There's kind of a Clemson connection uh, with Michigan. And uh, the state of Michigan, of course, the head coach of Michigan went to Clemson. Ground ball left side. That's through the hole. Stacy around third. He will hold. Prate up of the ball quickly in the shallow left field. And it's a base hit for Jaron Purify. And there's two men on again with Liggett here in the top of the second inning. And that's where little things like that pass ball earlier really hurt you in the long run because it gave you a free second base. Now all of a sudden right. he's at third and another pass ball. That's a potential score. Yep. Here's Oliver Service. 
who had a base hit his last time up. Liggett leads 2-0. It could have been worse. They had the bases loaded with one out and did not score anymore. There goes the runner. Ball gets by. Into score comes Stacy. Down to third goes Purify. He kept running. So it's a pass ball. It's 3-0 Liggett. And now purifies it third with nobody out. And that's exactly what I was talking about. A pass ball like that, you got a runner at third, he scores, and then once again, even better base running by Purify just to keep those wheels going. Touch second. Great play. Big time motor and awareness. Service drooling like the butcher's dog and reminds himself he's got to stay back. And I love it, though. We've been seeing this a lot at the high school level this year. A lot of bunting, a lot of base running, a lot of moving runners around, manufacturing runs. That's what's been missing from baseball, in my opinion, for yeah. the past, like, five, ten years at the major league level. Yeah. Here's the third hit-by-pitch today from Cardinelli. And so service is on at first, purify at third. Looks like the coach is coming in to make a pitcher change. Yep. So Kevin Shubnell to the mound. We'll take a timeout. We'll come back and tell you all about the new pitcher. For the Norsemen, 3 nothing Liggett. Back after this. Hi, folks. Dr. Joe here again with Michigan Orthopedic Surgeons. Did you know that kids are not little adults when it comes to sports injuries? That's because of something called the growth plate. Growth plates exist all over the human body in our growing athletes. They're actually little cartilage discs that exist at the end of all the long bones. It's simply where a kid grows. The problem is that the growth plate can be the weak link. What might be a sprain, a strain, or a tear in an adult when they hurt themselves can actually be a growth plate fracture in a kid. So it's important if your kid has hurt themselves and they're not using their arm or they're not able to put weight on a leg, come see one of us get an x-ray, and make sure it's not a growth plate fracture. For more information, go to miorthosurgeons.com. The innocence of youth. Is there anything any better? But soon they'll be in high school and facing all the same challenges you faced. How to make friends. How to fit in. How to be cool. We want our children to have everything they'll need to live fulfilling and productive lives. Make sure the kids in your family are among the more than 300,000 participants here in Michigan who take part in high school sports. Welcome back to Gross Point North. Pitching change. The afternoon is over for the starting pitcher, Rocco Cardinelli. The new pitcher is number 15, Henry Rocco. So we stay with the Rocco theme, R-O-C-H-O. Uh, Rocco Cardinelli will go to shortstop, and Schaefer will go to third base. Hill will come in and play center field. Now then, Henry Rocco, sophomore pitcher, 5'10", 155. He inherits a first and third, and a run in, Liggett leading three to nothing. Yeah, not a great spot to come into, but we saw it actually earlier this week at the West Bloomfield game. You know, the starting pitcher gets knocked out. The relief pitcher for Rochester Adams comes in and he held down five scoreless innings. So hopefully you get that production out of Rocco if you're a Gross Point North fan. Yes, sir. So I assume he's throwing to his twin. Both sophomores. We had the same situation the other day. We call the Pico Twins. So here we go. Rocco's first pitch is a ball. And the Picor brothers. That's right. They were not twins, but they were brothers. Yep. But the Picos were uh, actual twins. Oh, hit by pitch. Another hit by pitch, fourth of the game. Bases are loaded. And so bar the pitcher who has the two RBIs in this game. I think that's the second time Sharp's been hit by a pitch today, too. It is. <laughs> he has a chance now in the same scenario he had his first time up. Bases loaded and nobody out. 
Three nothing. Liggett looking to blow the brakes off here in the second in Gross Point. And that's the tough part too about doing these double headers as well. Getting in that bullpen early in the first game, it, it doesn't line you up well for that second game. It really doesn't. North is um, going with Nick Jarakis to start the second game, but that who knows. Bar pops one up, left field, it's playable. Plenty of speed at third. Purify will tag, and Prate comes in, and it drops. And so that will be an RBI single. I don't think he ever touched the baseball. He went back and didn't read the wind. It dropped in front. It's an RBI single, third of the day for Barr, and it's 4 to nothing Liggett here in the second. And it's interesting, if you look at the flag in center field, there's not much action on it, but where we're sitting, there's a lot of wind coming directly at us. So you can tell that ball was pushed back in and just barely missed it outside of his glove. You're a kind scorekeeper. Yeah, well, if they don't touch it, technically, it is considered a hit. That one gets by, but it's a short backstop. If it did touch his glove, it, I, it is an error. But if it doesn't, the baseball snobs would yell at me for saying an error. <laughs> but even though it was misplayed. An easily accessible ball. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. Talk to the baseball geeks. I don't make those things up. Well, they don't have that up on the scoreboard, so we don't know what they're scoring at in the official rule book. Yeah, I don't think they're scoring. <laughs> but we know people are scoring at home. So it's been tough duty behind home plate for the catcher. Charlie Rocco. And uh, he's pitching to Kin, but the job has not gotten any easier. So this is Jones the batter. Ryan Jones, the first baseman. Athletic kid, a lot of pop in that bat. Bases loaded. Breaking ball misses. 3 and 0. Oh. And if you're north, you just want to don't beat yourself, right? Throw the strike, put the ball in play. Let your defense work. No errors. Yep. Pass balls. Settle down. Fine stop by the catcher, but a run is in with the walk. So an RBI for Ryan Jones. It's 5 nothing Liggett, and nobody out. Bases remain loaded here in the top of the second. And you don't have anybody else warming up in the bullpen for Gross Point North right now, so... Rocco's going to have to work his way through this. You're right on that. This is uh, a doubleheader. You're in the second inning, and your first guy's thrown 45 pitches. And, and yeah, it's a tough spot for a, a lot of teams right now. But uh, Kevin Schnubel said, look, we're going to get through it. Schnubel learned under Brian Kelly at De La Salle, his mentor. Along with his father, Dennis Shubnell, who coaches football at St. Joan of Arc. Down in these parts, I think it's St. Clair Shores. 40 plus years he's been a head coach there. So a lot of coaching in his bloodlines. And he's learned from one of the best in Coach Kelly, who's back as an assistant at De La Salle. Good to see that. I digress. Bases loaded. Nobody out. Five nothing. Liggett. The home team has the home team has yet to give them their fifth run. There's a strike. This is Martin. Jake Martin, the DH. And he fists one to right. That's near the line, and that is foul. And unable to chase that thing down was Jordan Arsenault. But coming back with two strikes. And the count's now level at two and two with nobody out. Bases loaded. Green on deck. Matthew McLeod starting to get some warm-up action going on in the bullpen. It's a beautiful facility here. Beautiful. Gross Point North has done some wonderful things with their baseball complex in the offseason. They earned it. Getting all the way to the state championship game. Unranked, unheralded. The first year head coach that got the gig in February. 
It's awesome when things click like that, isn't it? Sometimes yeah. teams just come together. Yeah, really is. Walk to blow. Good eye there from Martin. It's an RBI. It's 6 nothing. Liggett as Reggie Sharp Jr. crosses the plate. Yeah. You can see yeah. Rocco a little bit in his head, yeah. talking to himself after that pitch. Coach coming out to settle him down. Let him know. Just throw strikes. Keep it low. Let's hope to get a ground ball, get a double play, something like that. Help us, help us get out of this. Kevin Shubnell out to have a word with his right-handed pitcher. First reliever off the bench for him today. Henry Rocco, he said he would be. This here may, comes Nick Green. This, Sorry, partner. I was going to say, this may be the best pitch Green sees right here, right after the coach comes. Yeah, so now the position for Liggett is, yeah, ambush him, yeah. right? Well, you're playing with house money, you're up 6 nothing. bases loaded. I agree. Yeah, you knew that first pitch strike was coming, and Rocco delivered. Yep. Barr on third, Jones on second, Martin on first. Two runs in in the inning, and that one is sky to center. Catchable for Hill. He'll make the catch. Barr will tag it. Third, Hill head home, and it's 7-0 Liggett. Touchdown, powder blue in red. But honestly, if I'm Gross Point North, I'll take the out right now. I'll trade it for a run. It's better than a walk and a free run and no outs. So, you know, pitch to contact, get out of this inning, and move on, survive, and hopefully you get on a little run later. Yep. Here comes Johnson, the first baseman. Andrew Johnson. So runner at first and second. It's the first out of the inning. It's been a lot of hit by pitches, four of them. The walks, four of them. And a borderline error in left. A misplay, if nothing else, in this challenging, windy condition. So Martin at first, Jones at second. 7 nothing Liggett. Looks to me like Rocco's kind of overthrowing a little. Yeah. Just a sophomore. In these situations, you want to work on your location. Speed is really not most important. Just can't find the zone. And this is a nightmare for Kevin Shubnell, the head coach. Looking down at the bullpen. So Dan Samini, the head coach. What a job he's done here. Five-time state champion is Samini. They won it in 11, 13, 14, 2016, and in 2021. They've been number one ranked in four different divisions. And to have that longevity, too. It's one thing to put together, ah, we had a nice group of seniors that came right. through and we were able to dominate the state. But when it's staggered across eight years, nine years like that, that means uh, coaching has played a major part in all of it, too. That's right. Liggett has another state title without Samini. That was in 79. Ground ball to short, could be two. Flipped a second for one to Shanley. No. Didn't get it. Two runs are going to score. In comes Jones, in comes Martin, and it's 9-0 Liggett in the top of the second. Just a ground ball to short, and uh, man, when things are going bad, things are going bad. Cam Schaefer couldn't handle it. Well, at the end of last inning, when Liggett left the bases loaded, Samini came over to his team and said, you cannot strike out with bases loaded like that. you got to put the ball in play. And even when it's a potential double play ball like yeah. that, it could still lead to an error or whatever. Oh, my. Swinging a fly ball left field. Fairly deep going back is Prate, and that ball is long gone. A three-run shot for Jaron Purify. 
and Liggett has busted it open here in the second. Purify, doing purify things in this game. Already a base hit, and this time the long ball. Yeah, Purify, we talked about him taking lots of pitches in his first two at-bats. That at-bat, first pitch swinging, gone. 12-0 Liggett on the three-run shot. And uh, Gross Point North is going back to the pen. A lot of traffic on the Bay Pass today. We'll talk about the new Norseman reliever right after this. Hi folks, Dr. Joe here again with Michigan Orthopedic Surgeons. Everywhere you look this time of year, people are running. And that's a great thing because running is an excellent exercise especially for your cardiovascular and musculoskeletal systems. But the question is, are you running a safe running program? All too often, people are hobbled by things like shin splints and patellar tendonitis. But luckily, simple things like stretching and warm up, the right running shoes, and realistic weekly mileages can keep you in your running game. For more information, go to miorthosurgeons.com. Gross Point Liggett, private school co-ed, 305 students. They've also got an elementary. they got a full on uh, K through 12, but 305. Dan Samini, the head coach. And uh, we told you all about it. Admissions outreach coordinator. And he has led the Knights to state titles five times. And Liggett two and two on the year. And leading in a big way in this one, they are playing out of Division II. They play out of the CHSL Central. I mean, they're picked to finish third or fourth in their division, and this is how good they are. But that's what happens when you have Orchard Lake St. Mary's, Brother Rice, Catholic Central, and, uh, well, sure, UAD as well, but those are the big four. You can throw Liggett in there, and there's none better in the state of Michigan in the CHSL Central Division that uh, Liggett is competing with today and making a statement in Gross Point. So here's the third pitcher today. And uh, it is Matthew McLeod, 5'11", 165, 11th grader. And the first pitch is to Oliver Service. He pops one to right. This should be out number two, and it is. It's the second out of the inning. So here comes Reggie Sharp Jr., who's been hit twice today. <laughs> Poor Reg. If he gets hit again by a, a third consecutive pitcher, too. He's been hit twice by two different pitchers. That's it. That's, it's not like one guy's picking on him. No. Uh, he's been peppered by everybody under the sun. Switch hitter, Reggie Sharp Jr., committed to Michigan. And uh, just a smooth defender. Guy that uh, very aggressive on the base pass, a smart player. Just everything you'd want in a leader on this team. There's a ground ball foul wide of the bag. His father, Dr. Reggie Sharp Sr., will pick that thing up. Looks like old Pops might have had a nice smooth glove back in the day. That was that was a nice slick fielding job. I like the red on red, too, with the shoes and the socks. Yeah, oh, he's coming correct. Outside corner strike called. This is McLeod on in relief, the third pitcher today for Kevin Shubnell. He's assisted by Steve Plyth, Joe Banowitz, and Ryan Liagra. Maybe the hardest assistant coaches to pronounce in the history of high school <laughs> baseball. That's how they recruited them. That's right. And my apologies for not getting the pronunciation before. Deuces are wild. Swing and a line shot. Left center field. That's up the gap. That's trouble. 
Sharp will take a round turn at first, but Brennan Hill with a fine job defensively to get it in and cut down the gap. Yeah, I thought Hill did an excellent job on that, surrounding it and then able to get that throw in. He would have been gunned out at second if he was trying to make that turn too wide. Yep. Fine job by Sharp to go the other way. The cloud of the set. Here's a bar who's had a big day. Three RBIs. Well, think about the length he's had between pitches, too, being able to keep his arm fresh today. No doubt. Maybe too much. Yeah, you never know, right? Yeah. <laughs> The 30 minutes in between pitches can sometimes throw you off. But on a hot day like this, it's a lot easier to stay warm. If this was a typical right. April day where it's like 45, 50 degrees, then you're a little more concerned. No doubt. 10 RBIs to uh, have the team league honors. Two and one the count. Run around first is sharp. Runs well. May not be running here. That one is lifted to right, should end the inning. In comes Arsenault, and he makes the catch. But damage done. Ten runs in the inning. And it's uh, now 12-0 Liggett. As the voice of Michigan Student Athletes, the Student Advisory Council's role is to convey the message of how high school sports are supposed to be played. We are responsible for helping the MHSAA maintain a positive and healthy atmosphere in which interscholastic students can thrive. We believe athletes should be competitive, sportsmanlike, and excel academically. We believe students in the stand should have fun, but not take the focus away from the game. We believe coaches should act as teachers, helping student athletes develop while still keeping high school sports in perspective. We believe that parents should always be positive role models and be supportive of their child's decisions. We believe officials commit their own time to high school sports. And respect should always be shown and given to them. The most important goal for student athletes is to enjoy high school sports while well, maintaining a high level of respect for all those involved in the games. Enjoy, enjoy the game! game. Nothing Liggett. The mercy rule is 15 runs after three. We're not there yet, but we might get there. Leading off is Jordan Arsenault, the number two pitcher in this uh, staff, talented staff. You see the defense there for Liggett, Green and Stacy in the outfit, along with uh, Johnson, Randazzo, Purify, Sharp at second, Jones at first, service behind home plate. Preston Barr still on the mound. And he's been impressive, Stick. Yeah, he got out of that first inning. I believe it was nine pitches. That's right. You know, and all three ground ball outs, too. So whatever he's doing, he's got a nice little sinker action on either that fastball or the slider that he's throwing and getting some good ground balls. The fastball can touch 92. Outside off speed is off the plate. Close misses. Two and one the count. Bar against Arsenault. Arsenault, a big time bat in the middle of this lineup, the cleanup hitter and the right fielder. All state pitcher last year. Record setting ERA. He had a .14 ERA. It's pretty good. It was a school record, and this guy can really hit it too. Gap to gap hitter. And uh, he's really the real deal. As you see there, rips one down the corner. That's the first hit of the day for North. Chased down in that corner by Jones, so it's a leadoff single. And here come the Norsemen in the third. <laughs> kind of got a sheepish grin over there at first base after that hit. You know, little fister right over yeah. the first baseman's head. But you know what? If you watch Bull Durham, a couple of those a year, next thing you know, your batting average is up about 50 points. That's right. Just do a Bull Durham reference. Oh, of course, one of the best baseball movies of all time. Yeah. What's not to love about baseball? Baseball's romantic. That's uh, that's Moneyball. 
No. What? Baseball's oh, they said, romantic. They say both things. It's do they? Both, both moves, yeah. Okay. I do right. not get romantic about baseball. That's right. That's right. But they stole it from Bull Durham. Yeah. That's fair. Okay. Fair both enough. great baseball movies. Baseball, of all sports movies, baseball has the best sports movies. There's no doubt. No uh, big lead at first. Arsenal, not a threat to run in this situation. He's going to go to Michigan State, just go to school. He's had a great career, but this guy's, uh, you know, a lot of kids are doing that, and that's okay. This is Bobby Rhodes, first-year varsity player, a guy that's getting his first varsity start today. Big, strong kid, good kid, good student. And uh, his coach raved about his work ethic and how good of a teammate he is. I mean, what, what better praise can you get? Yeah, that's... It's the kind of guy you're dealing with here in Bobby Rhodes. And he looks great coming off the bus, too. You know? Yeah. <laughs> you, you well, Frank Thomas. <laughs> yes. Playing first base, walks up. You walk off the bus with that guy, it's like, uh-oh. That's right. We're going to have to deal with some stuff today when we're playing Girls Point North. No doubt. 2-2 two -two count to Rhodes. Edging off a of first arsenal, not a threat to run. Pitch is low. Fine block job by service. This is a part of his game. He's really worked on. Can we get another look at that? I mean, those are things that were pass balls last year. Cat quick Not on this that. year. Not this year. And textbook. You see how he put the snapped the glove down between his legs so the ball couldn't get there? Put his shoulders forward to hunch. Yep, exactly right. Frame job there doesn't help. Bobby Rhodes draws a big-time walk in his first varsity start and his first varsity at bat as a starter. So two men on. And uh, the Norsemen come back. Look, we knew they weren't going to lay down at home on a Saturday. No, the Crosstown rival. And especially we were talking earlier, not only Crosstown rival, but these guys have played together since they were 12 years old, even before that, I'm assuming, in the Little League system. So That's right. You know, they're not going away. No, they're not. And pride's on the line. And we've got some highlights of that Little League World Series team. We've got uh, 16 members, 10 from Liggett, 6 from North. All a part of the 2017-2018 Gross Point team that went to the Little League World Series. Dan Semini out to have a word with his stud right-hander. <laughs> and there it is. The uh, 17 and 18 Gross Point Woods Little League World Series team. They went all the way. First team from Michigan to get to Williamsport. How cool is that? Ten from one team, and there they were before the game. All buddies, you know, and, and playing together, having fun. But getting to the Little League World Series is, is something we dreamed about. Yes. But Gross Point did it. Yeah. And they did it with these two teams combined. My Commerce Little League team did some damage in the States when we were 12 years old. But, man, I couldn't even imagine getting to Williamsport, that feeling when they give you your own jersey and all that good stuff. And, those yeah. are memories, like, we didn't go as far as them, and me and my 12-year-old friends still reminisce about sure. it. Sure. Can you imagine? We've got some video clips of that. This is, um, we'll get to that in a bit. This is number three, Ryan Henderson, who's uh, the DH today. Quarterback of the football team. This young man was on JV last year. Finds a barrel. Quite often, that's on the outside part of the plate. Henderson didn't like it, but it's a strike dealt from Barr. Henderson does kind of a weird thing with his hands on the bat while the pitch is coming. He's moving his bottom hand up and down, up and down a little bit. It's interesting. Yeah. Everybody's got their own little quirks. Yep. Hendo, what they call him. Just missed upstairs. Been a good call today from that home plate umpire, Scott Wallandowski. Ron Churchill down at first. He'll call game two behind home plate. 12 nothing Liggett. Bottom of the second. I think I said bottom of the third. Feels like it's the bottom of the tenth. <laughs> I've had enough runs. It's been all Liggett. Arsenal on at second. Rhodes on at first. This is their first threat of the day. No outs. Bases loaded. Big pitch coming. I know it's a 12 nothing game, but look, this is a big pitch for Barr, and it's mm -hmm. maybe a bigger one for Hendo. And he walked him. 
bases are loaded. And I want to go back to the point you made. Sometimes in a big lead, long waits happen. Correct. Long waits throw off rhythm. Pitchers like rhythm. They like consistency. Is this a product of the delay in the lead? I mean, in the it's, beginning? it's tough to say it isn't, right? Because he came out throwing absolute darts in that first inning. Nine pitches. Right. And here we are, bases loaded with no outs. 15 pitches already in this inning. This is the left-handed hitting Matthew McLeod, who will hit for himself. He'll come in and hit in the spot for Shane Armbruster. That one misses, and that was tight. Bar not getting any calls right now, but <laughs> bases loaded. Arsenault at third, Rhodes at second. Henderson at first, nobody out. And Barr can't find the zone right now. Yeah, that's another thing, too. You know, when you get up 12-0, sometimes you, you don't have that edge that you had when it was a 0-0 ball game or a 2-0 ball game going into that inning. Adrenaline's got to pump up. Maybe these base loaded will do it for them. Three and one. North looking for something, and they found it here in the bottom of the second. They got a lot of making up to do, but this seems to be the right start. Matthew McLeod with a long stance. Inside corner, well painted fastball. Strike two. See how far apart his legs are? Yeah. Normally you want shoulder width, but he is defensive. And he walked him. And the game's first run from the Norsemen is in. It's 12 to 1. North gets on the board. Bottom of the second. Rhodes to third. And uh, into score is Arsenault. 12 to 1. We got a pinch runner coming in for the pitcher, Adam Arnold. We've also got a pinch hitter. This is Nick Jarakis. Nick Jarakis will pinch hit. For the number eight hitter, Ben Prate. So this is a big move by Shubnell. This is a guy that he's featuring in game two as the starting pitcher. He'll now come on to pinch hit. Bases loaded, 12 to 1. Look it on top. Big cut and a miss. Barr went right at him. Yeah, nice pitch by Barr. Now he's working from ahead. He hasn't been able to do that in a couple batters. Off speed, and Jarakis aggressive off the bench. He's known mainly as pitcher only, but he's in this spot. He can swing it a bit, but hasn't been called on much this year. Tough spot for Jarakis. Bar ahead of him. That's a good pitch to waste. Yeah, want to move the eye level after dropping in that nice little slide piece low in, or inside. Preston Barr. With that slider, change up and curve to go along with that fastball against Jarakis. And Nick battling back here. It's two and two. Bases loaded, a run in in the bottom of the second. Barr has had to really labor. It's been a 24 pitch second inning. And Jarakis giving him all he can take. Can't be an easy spot coming in off the bench for Jarakis. A lot of space on the left side of that infield. Third base kind of playing close to the line. Shortstop up the middle. Got him on strikes. Barr comes back with a K. It's a big one. And there's one out in the Norseman's second. That's huge. A huge strikeout. So here comes the nine hitter, Luke Shanley. Had an older brother that played here at North. Quiet kid, quick hands, junior right handed hitter. That was Barr's first strikeout of the day. Bases loaded. Rhodes at third, Henderson at second. And 
And that misses outside the zone. Adam Ariolt running at first, the big 6'4 senior. 2 0 the count. Nowhere to put him. Big lead. Inside at the letters, strike call. Yeah, you can tell he took a little bit off that just to make sure it was a strike, but that, that was big. You don't want to go with a 3 0. No, sir. Double play depth up the middle for Purify and Sharp. One of the best double play combos you'll find around. Barr comes back with a sharp heater on the outside corner for strike two. Two and two. Luke Shanley awaits the bar pitch. First base caught, double play, no. Back in time was Ariolt. It's one out, recorded. Ariolt is down though. Johnson ran into him, inadvertent contact, and he might have got him in the helmet. Yeah, I think a knee to the helmet yep. there as he was trying to get to the bag. So Johnson and Ariolt and the scamper to try to get back, and we'll get a look here. Fine play by Johnson to hustle. Ooh, and then it yeah. was a right knee to the left side of the head of Ariolt. That'll knock you silly for a little bit. He is up, as you can see, on the seat. Yeah, that's just one of those where you got to shake it off. It's a tough hit. Glad he's up sitting. So 12 to 1. We'll step aside for a moment with two outs in the second inning, a run in, and bases still loaded when we come back. This is the prep. Hi folks, Dr. Joe here again with Michigan Orthopedic Surgeons. Everywhere you look this time of year, people are running. And that's a great thing because running is an excellent exercise, especially for your cardiovascular and musculoskeletal systems. But the question is, are you running a safe running program? All too often, people are hobbled by things like shin splints and patellar tendonitis. But luckily, simple things like stretching and warm-up, the right running shoes, and realistic weekly mileages can keep you in your running game. For more information, go to miorthosurgeons.com. Aralt, uh, Adam is okay, up, he is gonna leave the game. Into the game comes Connor McMahon, a 6'2 junior to pinch run. The Norsemen have really gone through their entire bench, it feels like, and we're not through the second inning. Good to see Ariel get up, okay, walk off, under his own power. Yeah, it's tough, I mean, knee to the side of the head. Nobody wants that on a beautiful Saturday afternoon. No, sir, base is still loaded, and there's two outs. Cam Schaefer, the batter, the leadoff man. And he looks at Uncle Charlie over for a strike. Beautifully paced, placed pitch by Preston. Yeah, perfect 0-1 pitch right there after starting him off with a fastball, coming back with that, buckle the knees. Now you can do whatever you want. Both teams 2-2 two two on the year. Liggett getting a sweep on Thursday, and they were swept by St. Mary's the week before that. Meanwhile, the Norsemen coming in 2-2. Two two. They've got a win, a 1-0 win over Utica Ford back on Thursday, and uh, they got a win over their rival, Gross Point South. They split. Another really wide stance, too. Are you seeing how wide they like yeah. almost covering the entire batter's box? Yeah. I'm not sure if that's just their bases loaded strategy, just trying to get, you know, the barrel on the ball. That's a good point. But really interesting. 
Schaefer, a captain on this team, had two big hits in that win over Ford on Thursday. Very versatile. Ground ball right side. Sharp has it. Flips to first, and that'll end the inning. So, limited damage, but the Norsemen get one across. 12-1 to as we go to the top of the third in Gross Point. Years of playing sports took a toll on my feet. The worst was the tear in my Achilles tendon. I went to fix my feet today and I've been pain free for two years. I'm back to pickleball five days a week. Amazing. I've been fixing foot pain for decades. Don't give up hope. Call or visit Fix My Feet today. Fix My Feet is now open in Rochester Hills, located on Rochester Road in the Target Center. Come in for a free consultation. Are you prepared to be transformed into a better version of yourself? Shaped into a force that others can't imagine. We are part of something bigger. A force that never quits. America's Navy, forged by the sea. Check us out at Navy.com. Ah, yes, the Norsemen, coached by Kevin Chubnell in his second year. Also doubles as the Dean of Culture and Communication. Uh, he is Dean of Students as well. And uh, look, they're in the Mac White Division I. Champions a year ago, made it all the way to the finals and lost one nothing. But what a season and run it was for Chubnell in his first year. Now in year two. Big expectations. They did lose some things, brought some pieces back. They are without Drew Hill, the brother of Brennan. He's got a foot injury and re-injured some things on Thursday. So, uh, But look, the Norse out of this one 12-1, to 1, but uh, a lot of promise uh, for them this year, Stick. And after what you did last year, the confidence level still has to be quite high. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that, that's just gained experience for all of these kids that were on this team and an expectation for the entire culture. Swinging a fly ball to right. This is uh, off the bat of Ryan Jones. And it's recorded in right. Arsenault with a catch, one up, one down. And uh, here it comes Jake Martin. Fouled away. Glad you're with us. 75 degrees. This is game one. We'll have game two as well coming up at 1 o'clock. 11-run lead right now for Liggett. Matthew McLeod came on last inning. He's got an interesting kind of lanky, a lot of arm action, a lot of leg action before he releases the ball. Sometimes that can be distracting as a hitter. A lot of moving parts. Yeah. Kind of herky-jerky, and, and the timing is, it seemed like a challenge. you got to be patient against him. Yeah, he's got a little snap of the elbow right before he releases it. Interesting release. It is. This is uh, Jake Martin, the senior outfielder. Martin can do a lot of different things. Very good defensively, infield, outfield. Good base runner. Great bunter. Stick, told you earlier. Popped up, should be playable. Shallow center field. Hill coming in and making the catch, and there's quickly two outs. And Girls Point North's got to feel great about this inning so far, right? This is the first time they've been able to get the first two batters out. First time the pitchers looked settled in and pitching to contact, letting his fielders do the work. And if you're Liggett, you know, you're trying to put up what? Four more runs? Yeah. 
15 after three. They won't get there here. It's a pop-up to second base. And quite playable for Luke Shanley. And the side retired. So a 1-2-3 inning. Just what the doctor ordered for the Norseman. And uh, we go to the bottom half of the third. Still 12 to 1. The Knights of Liggett on top. Hi folks, Dr. Joe here with Michigan Orthopedic Surgeons. We all know that our wives and daughters deserve special attention, but that's especially true when it comes to their knees. Do you know that females are at a two to five times risk compared to their male counterparts when it comes to blowing out their knees? It doesn't seem fair, but it's true. The reasons include the way females are made and the way they fire their muscles. But fortunately, there are injury prevention programs out there that can greatly decrease this risk of injury. And if you do know a female who blows out her ACL, don't despair. We have neat, innovative, minimally invasive ways to fix their knees and get them back onto the field. For more information, go to miorthosurgeons.com. a seed across the diamond. It was a lot of open mouths after that play right there. That's unbelievable. Well done. Oh, yes, there he is, Jaron Purify. The shortstop making a great play. There he is. Fabulous play in the Little League World Series 2017-2018. Saw it there. And uh, these guys all played together, 16 of them, 10 from Liggett, 6 from North on that 17-18 team, or most of them. And uh, they're a great play. Thanks to ESPN for that. What a cool thing to make it all the way to Williamsport, Pennsylvania. And you wonder what the text messages were like between these young gentlemen before this game, too. <laughs> you know, hey, we get to play this week. What's going on? Hey, we're going to take it. No, you're going to take it. <laughs> Oh, yeah, remember when I struck you out when we were 12? About to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> remember that hotel night on Tuesday yeah. in Williamsport? You wonder who the Jersey mom was. You know, there's always that one mom that cleans all the uniforms before those big tournament games. Oh, yeah. We oh, had yeah. them. Oh, yeah. Swimming in the pools in the hotel. Oh, man. No better memories than that. Yeah. Baseball and friends. That's it. And a lot of them bonded in that Little League World Series. Today, they're rivals. Tomorrow they'll go back to being friends. I feel like Dave Matthews. I was going to say, dropping some Dave Matthews. <laughs> <laughs> we'll say goodbye. All right. Yeah, the guys heard that on the way to Cleveland this week, or to Canton, right? Fish was stuck with it. What a beautiful strikeout pitch there. A nice slider. Was able to break its way into the zone. Second of the day for Barr, according to Pat the Stat. 50 pitches now for Preston Barr. Strike. Or ball, rather. My bad. Didn't mean to show him up. I have no idea if that was a strike. I just thought it was. Must have been a little outside. Scott Wallandowski's done a fabulous job behind home play today. This is Brennan Hill, and he's got a shot to center that holds up for Stacy to make the catch. That's a hard ball to play in wind and a line shot right at you. And Stacy handled it like a maestro. Yeah, I thought that ball was going to drop, but it just carried and kept sailing on him. Right off the bat, I thought that was just a nice line drive single. Yeah. But no, it kept carrying right to the center fielder. You see the smooth swing from Brennan Hill. And the fine play by the center fielder, Gary Stacy. Stacy just a sophomore. And uh, promising one at that. Here comes Jordan Arsenault, senior captain. Fouls one by us. We told you about the record-setting ERA as the ace pitcher a year ago. But uh, this is a guy that can really work the count well, gap-to-gap -gap hitter. And a guy that's a leader and has really embraced that leadership role. Good teacher. 
all state a season ago in Division One. Yeah, with that ERA, almost all world. Yeah. That's uh Levy and Brock Porter battled for the top ERA. Swing and a miss. Bar battles back, two K's in the inning, and shuts the door at North. 12 to 1 as we head to the fourth here at the home of the North. With your dream, your drive, your grit, the heart and vision of every member of your team. We take it all. And from those threads of greatness, we weave a uniform of a champion. In many ways, our sport is just like yours. We've brought together a team of elite designers. We've put in the time and the sweat, perfecting our craft over 14 years. We've outfitted thousands of teams for thousands of victories, approaching each new project, each new game, like it's the only one we'll ever play. And let's be honest. We've done it all with a quality so unmatched that some can't help but call it perfection. You know, it's more than just a shirt. Look like a champion, play like a champion. A champion powered by the G. Hashtag G Brand USA. G Brand USA. Elite design, unmatched quality, American pride. We're proudly made in the USA. Are you looking to hire? How about contacting the Headhunters? Contact Bill Wideski today, 248-343-6027. Theheadhunters-us.com. Leaders in recruiting executives, C-level executives, accounting and finance, engineering, supply chain, operation leadership. Contact the Headhunters today, 248-343-6027. Chad and Stick back with you from Gross Point North. 12 to 1. Johnson leads off. Belts one to center. But it'll hang up long enough for Hill to make the snatch. One pitch, one out here in the Liggett fourth. And that's three swings for Liggett in a row. Four, actually. Four, actually, outs that have just been kind of lightly hit balls to the outfield. Easily playable for Gross Point North. Ever since McLeod has come in the game, he's got that quirky motion. and It's causing some awkward contact. You shut down the lineup. In his inning of work, this is the number nine hitter, Gary Stacy. Had a base hit his last time up. It's a nice changeup. Well located. Out of the hot hand of uh, Matthew McLeod, who's on in relief, third pitcher of the day. Popped him up. Middle of the infield. And the catch is made by the starting pitcher today, Rocco Cardinelli, for out number two. So back-to-back -back quick innings for North. Liggett, some aggressive swings. Yeah, Matthew McLeod has come in and settled things down. You know, the coach from Liggett, Samini, uh, he was talking when they were coming off about their lazy swings last inning. Look at you with the inside scoop. I listen. <laughs> Ground ball to second. A quick inning. One, two, three. The Norse back to back. One, two, three innings. We go to the bottom of the fourth. 12 to 1. Liggett on top. Every morning, I woke up a stabbing pain in my feet. Plantar fasciitis, the doctor called it. All I know is it really hurt. One visit to fix my feet today and the pain was gone. And even better, the custom art supports I got worked in all my shoes. Don't wait. End your foot pain now. Call or visit Fix My Feet today. Fix My Feet is now open in Rochester Hills, located on Rochester Road in the Target Center. Come in for a free consultation. My dad and my grandfather are officials. I've grown up around officials and seeing how much they enjoy being part of the games. As a student athlete, I've always appreciated the people out there who are willing to give back to the kids. 
The Legacy program lets me officiate while I'm still in high school, working younger kids' games. Officiating gives me a better understanding of the game. I get to make some pretty good money for a high school kid, and I even get to spend some quality time with my dad. There's help wanted. Just whistle. Deegan Barr on in relief. This is the younger brother of the starting pitcher, Preston Barr. They just keep pumping out bars in Liggett, I guess. Is there another one in the line? we got the oldest brother, Kurt, at Michigan, doing good things. Huh? Dax is in second grade. Dan Cimini's got his eyes on him, I'm sure. He'll be up here in no time. This is Deegan, and uh, he will come on in relief a 12 to 1 lead and I tell you what this is a big inning for North because the ball game is over it's a 10 run uh, mercy rule after five next inning so no time to waste if the Norsemen want to keep this thing a going and this is the guy to do it stepping in the box right now I mean he had a great first at bat for his first varsity at bat of all time Bobby Rhodes wearing big Frank Thomas's number too he is the big hurt number three five Drew a walk and started the rally back in the second inning. Big cut and a miss. And uh, Deegan Barr getting ahead. It was a fine outing for Preston Barr as he goes uh, three innings and gives up just the one run. Get his final line from Pat coming up. Total of uh, 56 pitches. Struck out three, walked three, gave up one run, gave up one hit. So the walks cost him a bit in that one run inning, but just one run in three innings, not bad. Yeah, got into a little bit trouble there in the second inning, but was able to work his way out of it. Bobby Rhodes awaits the bar pitch, and that is blasted to right. Fairly deep. Jones going back, has room, and makes the catch in front of the warning track for out number one. That just shows, though, how much potential power Bobby Rhodes has in his swing. I mean, that was opposite field and didn't even look like he made yeah. super solid contact with it. And it went all the way to the warning track. Some pop flashed, no doubt. So there's one out, and that will uh, bring up the number six hitter. In Kevin Shubnell's lineup, this is Ryan Henderson, the junior designated hitter. Kevin Shubnell calls him a student of the game, a guy that really wants to learn and is improving. Gamer on JV a year ago, but again, another first-year varsity guy in baseball. He's messing with that bottom hand to get on the bat. That one's chopped foul. What a beautiful day for baseball. Nice looking school and complex. We've been to South. We've been to Liggett. And now we've been to North. Feels good in here. Yeah, nice breeze coming across the field. This brand new turf. Ground ball to third, Randazzo across the diamond and a fine scoop by Johnson to bag it for route number two. Yeah, you called it. First baseman with a beautiful scoop there. First baseman don't get a lot of credit for that. You know, like it kind of looks like a natural play and it almost should be made every time, but that's a lot harder to do than people give you credit for. So a nice big play by number 22. Here's Matt McLeod, trying to help his own cause. North down by 11. I'm in that north on deck circle. I'm looking out. He was rather late on that. 
We've got Nick Jarakis over there. Hoping to get in a bat this inning. Two and one the count. Two outs. We'll have game two to follow. Inside corner strike called and Deegan Barr. The young arm with a strike. Yeah, he has come in and thrown nothing but strikes. You got to love that if you're the coach. Bringing in your secondary pitcher and all he does is pepper the strike zone. Just a freshman too. Fine future. This team has a nice blend of experience, youth. Really built for a run in Division Two, And trying to battle and win the CHSL Central. Swing and a miss. Deegan Barr with an impressive prep debut. The rookie gets him out and unscathed in the fourth. Let's go to the fifth inning. 12 to 1. We begin with your dream, your drive, your grit, the heart and vision of every member of your team. We take it all, and from those threads of greatness, we weave a uniform of a champion. In many ways, our sport is just like yours. We've brought together a team of elite designers. We've put in the time and the sweat, perfecting our craft over 14 years. We've outfitted thousands of teams for thousands of victories, approaching each new project, each new game, like it's the only one we'll ever play. And let's be honest, we've done it all with a quality so unmatched that some can't help but call it perfection. You know, it's more than just a shirt. Look like a champion, play like a champion. A champion powered by the G. Hashtag G Brand USA. G Brand USA. Elite design, unmatched quality, American pride. We're proudly made in the USA. <laughs> Shallow left field, purified and service oh, to yes. heavy catch. Oliver service out of nowhere. Ryan Knable must have heard him coming and just vacated. And the defense continues here. Chase Fralick gets some decent barrel on here, puts in kind of no man's land. There you saw Oliver Service with that fabulous catch in the 2018 Little League World Series. That's the athleticism, that's a catcher. He's headed to Texas and you can see why. Oliver Service with a big time play, thanks to ESPN for the cut. A reuniting of 16 young men who played on that Little League World Series team, 17 and 18 at uh, Liggett and North. Today, the rivals going at it. Here's Oliver Service, who you saw in that highlight to lead things off here in the fifth inning. Fun fact, that is when Texas offered the scholarship. Is that right? I don't know. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> If I was watching Little League World Series and I saw that play, I'd be making an offer at 12 years old. No doubt. Why not? You can see it there. Oliver the upright stance and he looks at the pitch upstairs from Matthew McLeod who's done a fine job McLeod is uh, about to throw his 25th pitch today he has yet to give up a run yeah, he Just has definitely come in and calm things down for Gross Point North here and you see the zeros up on the scoreboard that started when McLeod came in the game that's right 2-0. Oh. Service today. One for two in the ball game. Has scored two runs, and he's in prime position to score his third run today, perhaps. Here comes Reggie Sharp, Jr., Service has also been hit by a pitch. So here's Reggie. Who's been hit by two pitches. He's been hit by two pitches today and yeah. also has a single and a run scored. Great on base percentage today for Reggie. <laughs> oh. 
Oh, hit by hit by every pitcher today. And there's the trifecta. <laughs> the hat trick. How about it? Reggie's going to need a nice bath, a massage, a sauna trip. Hope he's got a girlfriend, man, because that's, I mean, he, he's going to need some kind of, <laughs> man. Have you ever seen that? Three different pitchers hit one person? No. I mean, I've, I've seen Reggie's a guy get not... hit three times. <laughs> man, oh, man. <laughs> it's certainly not intentional, but, yeah, it's it's an oddity to see that. Well, especially because he's not, like, the biggest target in the world. No. You know? No. Six foot five, 300-pound guy up there getting hit. <laughs> yeah, you understand that, you know, crowding the plate. But he's uh, smaller yeah. in stature, harder to hit. But they've been able to find him, all three pitchers today. Sure have. Poor Reg. So that'll bring up Barr. Barr's had a big day. He's got a runner on first and sharp, runner on second in service. This is Deegan Barr. Just to help himself out. So this is Deegan Barr, his first at bat today. And he is uh, batting for his brother. Strike called at the letters. That's off the hot hand of Matt McCloud. And I like McLeod. McLeod's more of your stereotypical pitcher. You know, he's not up there throwing gas. He's he's just picking his spots. And he came in in a tough spot. Yeah, and he's crafty. He's got a nice uh, curveball. Knows how to locate it. Knows how to switch timing. It's the art of pitching. That's right, Jim. <laughs> I love it. That's the infield fly. Popped up. That is going to be an out recorded. That'll be the second out of the inning, and that'll leave things up. It's a number 21, 24 rather, and that's uh, Ryan Jones. Jones looks like a big, strong kid. Nice, balanced approach at the plate. He makes full contact. It's going places. Real good team guy. Runner going to third. Gets away. Service is nearly caught at third, but the throw low. Got away from Schaefer. And Liggett now has two in scoring position. And Liggett does not stop paying attention when they are on those base paths. They are looking to take every extra base possible. Yeah. And that was just a bad throw back to the pitcher, and they were able to make it work. RBI opportunities. Fine stop behind home plate. Charlie Racho, or Racho, Rocco, rather. The sophomore. You're in a 12 1 game, you're a catcher. Uh, you deserve a lot of credit. It's hard work, as you know. Popped up. This should uh, be out number two, and it is. That's uh, infield fly rule. Nope. Not quite. No? Nope. Okay. There's no runner on first, so no force play. Oh, no runner on first. My yes. bad. From our angle, it's tough to tell. Yes. Thank you, sir. Is the old umpire in me coming out? No, no. I knew that. <laughs> I, you're right. So that'll bring up Mr. Green. Martin, rather. Jake Martin, the batter. Green in the on-deck circle right in front of me. Second and third. Another pop-up. And back is Schaefer in foul territory. Makes the catch. And nothing to cross for Liggett. So... No scoring since that second inning, but they've got quite the cushion. An 11-run lead as we go to the bottom of the fifth. This is all over unless North can scratch out a couple of runs. We're back in a moment. This is the prep. Hi, folks. Dr. Joe here again with Michigan Orthopedic Surgeons. Did you know that kids are not little adults when it comes to sports injuries? 
That's because of something called the growth plate. Growth plates exist all over the human body in our growing athletes. They're actually little cartilage discs that exist at the end of all the long bones. It's simply where a kid grows. The problem is that the growth plate can be the weak link. What might be a sprain, a strain, or a tear in an adult when they hurt themselves can actually be a growth plate fracture in a kid. So it's important if your kid has hurt themselves and they're not using their arm or they're not able to put weight on a leg, come see one of us, get an x-ray, and make sure it's not a growth plate fracture. For more information, go to miorthosurgeons.com. Are you prepared to be transformed into a better version of yourself? Shaped into a force that others can't imagine. We are part of something bigger. A force that never quits. America's Navy. Forged by the sea. Check us out at Navy.com. Welcome back to Gross Point North. Alex Westfall, your executive producer. My color commentary is Stick. My name is Chad. Nick Jarakis to lead things off in the bottom of the fifth. It's a 10-run mercy rule after five. And if my math's correct, that means North needs two runs to prolong this game. I believe that education's paying off. <laughs> Jarakis, who will bat in that, uh, I believe it's the two-hole. And he looks at a strike. Struck out his first time up. He will start game two, or is at least scheduled to start game two, on the mound for Kevin Shubnell and the Gross Point Norseman. Ground ball right side. Sharp has it. Flips over to Johnson. And Jarakis grounds out to start the bottom of the fifth. You know, we haven't seen a lot of the shortstop in second base or in third, second base play for Liggett, but both those guys, every ball that's hit to them, nice soft hands, easy play. They don't look panicked at all. And just making nice, easy baseball plays. Yeah, no errors in this game. It's been a clean game. So this will now bring up number four. This is uh, Luke Shanley. Luke Shanley, the second baseman, the junior, 5'9", 150. Swing and a miss. This is Deegan Barr on the mound. On in replace of his brother, Preston, who went three innings. And he pitched a clean fourth. And he has come in just throwing strikes. He has 17 pitches now. They seen Shanley, the number nine hitter. And it's down the line. Foul ball. Great effort by Johnson. That was a great play by the first baseman. Yeah. Good reaction time, a nice dive. Very easily could have been a fair ball. Yep. Good practice anyway. Yeah, good range. Yep. He heard us talk about the second baseman and shortstop. <laughs> like, you know what? I could do stuff too. It's hard to keep up with that infield. Ground ball to Sharp. Eats it up. Throws to Johnson. And the Knights are one out away from winning for the third time in five tries. And capturing game one of this double dip. We'll have game two on a separate link. So game one will close out after this one. We'll have our G of the game after game two. Not after game one. And that will encompass games one and two. Here comes number nine, Cam Schaefer, the leadoff man. Strike called at the waist. Man, for a freshman, he has great pop on his fastball. He does. The third brother of four. His oldest brother is at Michigan this year. I believe he has six or seven appearances for the Wolverines as a true freshman pitcher. Not bad. Kurt Barr. I will say this, though. Kind of getting a little predictable in his pitches. When he's choosing, starts off fastball, comes back. Secondary pitch. 
That secondary pitch got a little bit away from the rookie. <laughs> I don't think that's how they drew it up. Just a 14, 15 year old out here throwing gas. Yeah. You know, you think just not too long ago, he wasn't playing 60 feet, six inches from the mound. That's know? right. That's right. Norsemen are down to their uh, final strike and their final out today. It's been a dominating Liggett performance so far and what looks to be a victory in game number one over their rival. Not giving up yet are the Norsemen. Cam Schaefer, a guy that they really like, the top of the lineup, gritty kid. They've seen him at number nine in the order for a lot of the year, but feels comfortable playing at any spot in that order. That wide stance. Gritty. Wow, that is wide. Yeah, several kids from north yeah. have that stance. It's, I saw it with bases loaded, and I thought, okay, that's just their strategy to, you know, kind of. The bases loaded stance. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, because you just, you just want to get the bat on the ball, right? right You're trying right. not to have too much motion. Contact stance. Exactly. But, no, that's just nobody on base, and that's how, that's how he's up here swinging. How about it? You're right. We'll have to talk to Kevin. Kevin. Uh, and we're not questioning it. No, no. Kevin listen, Shubnell, we're just, we're wondering. Whatever works for you in baseball, Got him in the do state it. finals last year. Yeah. <laughs> but no, it's an interesting approach. I think you're right. Yeah. I mean, Mickey Tettleton used to have the bat down here. Remember Julio Franco, the oh, bat yeah. way up here. Like, batting styles, oh, everybody's yeah. a little bit different. So, they are. not yeah. critiquing, just noticing. No, absolutely. That's your job. Thank you. <laughs> so, this is Rocco Cardinelli. Spelled C-A-R-D-I-N-A-L-E. He hit a three-run home run against Gross Point South last week in their win over their rival. Home run here keeps this game going. It does. Man at first, Schaefer. North hoping to see another day and inning. And once again, they're down to their final strike. As Schaefer scampers back to first, Johnson is holding him. At first. Got him on strikes. Ball game over. Liggett wins it 12 to 1. And a five inning shortened affair. Game one is over. Stick and I are back to recap it right after this. You're watching the prep. Years of playing sports took a toll on my feet. The worst was the tear in my Achilles tendon. I went to fix my feet today and I've been pain free for two years. I'm back to pickleball five days a week. Amazing. I've been fixing foot pain for decades. Don't give up hope. Call or visit Fix My Feet today. Fix My Feet is now open in Rochester Hills, located on Rochester Road in the Target Center. Come in for a free consultation. Game one is over at Gross Point North and uh, a dominant win for the Liggett Knights. In game number one. And uh, it started with a four run first. And uh, well, it ended with an eight run second inning. That's all they would need. One run for North in the bottom half of the second. Here's a look at the highlights. Bases loaded opportunity stick bar Drew first blood, that was a big bases loaded base knock. Yeah, came in and helped his own cause, give them a nice little lead going into the second inning, and there it was. Uh, the, the errors kind of were very costly for Gross Point North, a couple of them in that second inning, which led to a big 10-run second inning for Liggett, and they were able to kind of put it away from there and just kind of go on cruise control. We had a couple of quick innings after that, and just runs galore in the second inning, and that was about it. Yes, sir. The home run from Purify, the three-run shot. One of the highlights, exclamation points, and there you see it long gone. Yeah, that was a big shot for him, and you see the whole team there waiting for him at home plate. You know, nothing better, nothing more pure than when you hit that home run off the bat. 
It's like a good golf shot. I don't know what that's like, but I've heard. <laughs> the final numbers in this one, 12 to one, Liggett wins it over Gross Point North. And the winning pitcher in this ball game is Preston Barr. He went three innings. And his brother Deegan, the freshman, picks up the save in a couple innings of relief. The loss goes to the starter, Rocco Cardinelli. And uh, your game two starter for Gross Point North is Nick Jarakis. And uh, Jarakis will be opposed by Jackson Fetter in game two of the series. Coming up in about 20 minutes, thanks for watching game one. Your final score from Gross Point North in game one, Liggett goes to three and two with a 12 to one wipeout of the crosstown rival Gross Point North. We're back on another link in about 25 minutes. Stick around, we're the prep. Thanks for watching, so long.